Hello everyone and welcome back to another video, SB here, the channel for slow, seasonal and spiritual living where we celebrate food, faith and family in the everyday. In this week's video, we are really just going to be going through some dinner ideas, meal ideas that make the most of what we have already and what's growing because at the end of the summer, it's really harvest season and sometimes there's just too many things to cook. That doesn't mean we make good meals. I'm not much of a preserver. I don't do canning, much to people's surprise. Instead, I really use what we have and use it up and use it well, um, because I know that the freshest produce makes for the best meals. So what you see here is a bowl of whatever I was able to grow and whatever I was able to get at the market that's in season. There are a few vegetables that I do not grow and one of them is yellow squash and zucchini, which is a big surprise again because what Italian family doesn't grow that? I just will not deal with those squash bugs and I'd rather grow different varieties of squash, which pretty soon you'll see in upcoming videos where I will not be using zucchini, but otherwise um, a type of squash called a cucozza. And if you know what I mean, then you know there's gonna be some good stuff coming up. But otherwise, in this bowl, there's a bunch of peppers and tomatoes, eggplant, I grow a variety of eggplants every year. I try different kinds, and these are just the baby eggplants, and I get a few every couple of days. And then I'm just seasoning up everything. This is salt, pepper, a little ground garlic, and some oregano. And in this big bowl, it's just whatever you want to put. I mean, you don't really have to use this variety. It's just what I had on hand. And then after you just mix this up really well, it's gonna go in this big sheet pan where it'll roast, and you could serve this with anything. But for this meal, I'll be serving it with some polenta, which is just another version of cornmeal, which if you make it savory and mix it with a lot of cheese, man, that, that's up there with pasta. So it's going to be a really filling and really comforting meal. I am adding a little bit of water here just for some steam to come through in the oven. So these vegetables don't necessarily burn, but caramelize really well. So for this polenta, I'll show you how to make it from just regular cornmeal. You can buy instant polenta, which whips up like those instant mashed potatoes if you've ever gotten them. It's really popular, uh, but I like to buy in bulk and I like to buy ingredients rather than things in a box if I could help it. So this cornmeal is coarse ground and I'm just putting in some water in the pot. And with this cornmeal, it'll just be slowly soaking up the water. It may look like it has soaked up in the beginning because again, the ratio between the cornmeal and the water is almost equal. So what needs to happen is that you have to babysit it. It's kind of like any other type of polenta where you just have to sit there and, and do it like a risotto almost. So. A lot of stirring and a lot of babysitting but you know some some nights you just don't have nothing else to do and so this is what I'll be doing with the whisk and making sure that the cornmeal is cooked through because you don't want any grit you just want something really smooth to put these roasted vegetables on top So lots of butter and lots of cheese in here. That's what's gonna flavor this polenta. When you think about the content of this meal, if you just add this with the vegetables itself, you'd be surprised how filling it is. Uh, this is a great meal you could put on the table for Fridays, any fasting days, especially during Lent or Ember days. There's a few Ember days coming up in September. And this is one of those meals that celebrate the harvest without necessarily having to serve meat on the table. So I highly suggest you make a meal like this and it'll stick to your ribs without weighing you down. Thank you. 
So in the spirit of using what we have, that leftover polenta from the night before is gonna make some really nice fried polenta for breakfast the next day. Um, cornmeal is a very versatile dish. If you've ever made polenta before, and especially if you come from a Mediterranean family, the grain itself usually solidifies after a while and after you refrigerate it becomes something you could cut and slice like this. Now you can put this into a sauce which is a very popular way of doing um, a leftover polenta meal but I like to just fry it up and have it with some eggs and tomatoes and whatever we have in the kitchen that morning. It's another way of bringing variety to breakfast which you know, there's only so many ways you can make eggs and so many ways you can make oatmeal or anything like that. So this is a special treat. And um, again, it's not really filling and it's just something that will bring uh, a diverse experience to your breakfast, especially during a weekday. This is not going to take long to fry up and everybody loves it. Now, depending on the density of the polenta, you just have to be really gentle here because sometimes flipping it too much, it's gonna crumble. And that just shows you how light it is, even though it looks like a pretty heavy thing. Draining it on some paper towel just to get rid of the excess oil and you have a very healthy dish for breakfast that'll get you going and get you ready for the rest of the day. So towards the end of the summer, again, there's a lot of harvest and one of the vegetables that is seeming to get on its last legs is green beans. I do keep them in the freezer over the summer and now I'm just using up the last batch before I put in new seeds in the ground for the fall. The idea here is that I'm using up, again, whatever I was able to grow in a sustainable way and in a budget-friendly way. I'm not trying to make something extra or really crazy. I love green beans in a tomato sauce. It's another way of elevating a tomato sauce for pasta without having to throw in meat. So again, thinking about some plant-based meals, anything that's able to get you through a night without having to you know, find yourself heavy. You can find different variations of this meal in different cuisines around the Mediterranean. If you venture into Turkey or Egypt or anything on the eastern side of the Mediterranean, you'll find these green beans with these stewed tomatoes uh, served with eggs or served with other vegetables like beans. Um, I'm just going to toss this with some pasta because that's what, that's what makes everybody happy in my house. So with this pot here, after I saute the garlic and the onions and throw in my favorite cans of tomatoes, I like to do one crushed and one plum tomato where I just either smush in the pan, I've done this with my hands in a bowl before, whatever is just easier at that time. Um, so two cans this time because I wanna make it a little bit more chunky and I'm just adding in the basil and after this stews a little bit, the green beans will go in and the longer they simmer, the more flavorful everything comes in. So while I put this together, I just want to emphasize here that these meals usually don't take more than a few ingredients thrown together. And when you think about the time of year, especially in the liturgical calendar where we're in with ordinary time, where we're kind of just in this moment of simple cadence and 
just awaiting further celebration. Uh, these meals really symbolize that simplicity is a celebration enough. You don't really need a lot to make the people around your table happy, to make your belly happy, make your heart happy. And ordinary time is, it, to me, it just it's just that. It's a way of kind of turning inward a little bit, whereas so much of our um, life in other seasons of the year is turned outward. And it's a way of just understanding that you don't need much to celebrate if you have everything that you need at home because that in of itself is probably the purest form of celebration there is. These weekly dinners or rather nightly dinners that are just one pot or one big dish like you see here on my mom's big platter dish. Um, it's It really doesn't take a lot to, again, make yourself happy, make your family happy, and that is the true essence of what ordinary time is about. All right, so here we have another roast chicken dish. You've probably seen me roast chicken in, gosh, dozens of ways now in all of my videos. And it's usually the same. It's my thighs, my chicken thighs, which I love with the bone in. Um, boneless chicken thighs are, are pretty good for, I wanna say more savory, saucy type dishes. But if you're just roasting them in the oven, the bone is everything. And um, while I season this up with my regular um, salt and pepper. I like to do something slightly different every time I make roast chicken. Otherwise, it's the same thing all the time, right? So we have here um, a tangerine or an orange, whatever I had in the, in the fridge, and I'm just squeezing it and allowing the orange juice to kind of substitute for what I would otherwise put lemon juice. And I'm just experimenting here. I don't know at this time how it was going to come out, but I'll tell you, when we ate it, it was pretty good. Um, and it's just another flavor profile and again, just you don't really need to be sticking to a recipe or trying to be really organized and following a to-do list. Just use what you enjoy. We love paprika, so that's going in. We've loved adobo, that was already in beforehand. And it's just bringing ingredients together that, that make your heart happy. And with this chicken, we're going to do some sweet potato fries which again everybody loves healthier version of regular french fries um, get that beta carotene get that rainbow in there um, and i'm just leaving the skin on as well because some of us enjoy the skin and if you don't just easily peel it off i do make it thicker than usual just to have more bite and also it fits in the pan a little bit better <laughs> so it is um, again a simple dish and just another way of making roast chicken in a new and different way, even if it's just one ingredient that's different.
So I do almost all of my roast chicken on 400 for 30 to 45 minutes, depending on the type of cut that I'm roasting. But if you see here, all those onion pieces and a little garlic in there and all that oil, uh, don't hate on the oil. It's actually going to be uh, really savory when you serve it. You could just drizzle it all over and you could also keep it for um, kind of like a reserved fat, if you will. Um, the onions and the garlic also flavors the oil itself. So definitely keep it if you have um, an inclination of using it again in other dishes. Otherwise, to combat that oiliness, I always serve um, this type of chicken or any roast with fresh vegetables. And because we are, again, using what we have from that kitchen garden, it's these cherry tomatoes and these cucumbers. I am trying to grow another set of cucumbers this fall. I've heard you can do that, especially if you're in a mild area, which in the past few years my area has been. Thank you, climate change. Um, so with this meal, this simple salad here is just going to round everything out and provide some brightness where there is a lot of depth in the chicken dish already. So how many times a week do we have pasta? Two times, three times, we've had four times. It really is not as bad as what people think. It's about portions, please people, it's about portions. Um, but it's also about what you serve with it. So all of that roast chicken that I had um, the day before, I think at this point it was two days before, I was able to reserve and I knew that I wanted to combine it with a creamier sauce. Um, for another pasta dish. So here I am just cutting up the roast chicken so you get two meals for one after all of that big uh, preparation that I did that day. And while I am shredding this up, I'm thinking about the sauce. So the sauce here is not gonna be a tomato sauce even though it would work, but I'm gonna venture out of my usual and make a simple Alfredo sauce. But first I do need to heat up the chicken and make sure that it is um, warmed through before I do make the sauce. And yes, everything's going to happen in this cast iron skillet. So for the Alfredo sauce, it's about a lot of butter and slowly warming it through until it gets that bubbly brown in the skillet and then I'll be adding in some heavy cream and then lastly the fresh spinach leaves towards the end before they get too wilted. So using butter is something that I'm not necessarily used to. I tend to use more olive oil than anything else. So keeping an eye on this butter before it burns is, is a big task for me. <laughs> so I'm also trying to cook the pasta at the same time, um, which every recipe says, and I always find that that's just really difficult to do for most people because once the pasta's in, you're worried about it cooking and not getting it overdone, right? So I don't know if you're like me, but it always gives me a sense of anxiety. Um, so while that pasta is cooking, I'm just getting some garlic in with that butter and warming it through, not totally high, but just a way that it's going to absorb that butter and the garlic's going to flavor as much as possible. Mm -hmm. 
So heavy cream isn't something I buy on the usual, so when I do buy it, I know it's because I'm using it for a particular dish. Um, so with this big box of heavy cream, I've used it for some whipped cream for a cake I made the other day, and I'm just using the leftovers for this sauce. So after flavoring it, I added some chili peppers, I added some um, garlic powder, powder as well, salt and pepper. So here's the spinach, it's going right in. The chicken's going to go in here, which, you know, not really a purely Italian thing to mix the meat with the pasta, but with three kids and a hungry husband, putting everything in one dish is really the way to go. <laughs> so um, after I toss everything here in this really creamy sauce, I'm, I am gonna add some of the pieces of the chicken right on the side of the bowl. And that's going to be dinner for everybody else. So listen, I enjoy you staying with me. And if you're here till the end, I want to uh, wish you a beautiful week. I want to be able to see you next week with a new video. And I hope everything good and positive comes your way. God bless and stay safe. Mm -hmm.